Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.44 and in this lesson we'll take a look at my finished creation here. The last video, which I think was released something like two and a half weeks ago, I detailed that you could take one sample, it could be of any duration, of any kind, and then you had access to all of our delay-based effects and all of our frequency effects. So I've gone off, I've made something, it took quite a long time, and the truth is sometimes projects just take longer than others, especially when you're doing very creative things and you need those moments of inspiration just to strike because when they're not striking, you don't know what to do and you're just constantly replaying the same little part again and again until eventually your mind just light bulb goes off and you think of something that you want to do and then sometimes you try it, it works, sometimes it fails. So what I did here took me quite a bit of time, but hopefully you guys will listen back to this and hear just what exactly is possible with our delay and frequency based effects in one sample. Originally, I was going to just record two or three seconds of background noise and then use the reverb, use the resonator banks, do all that stuff and create sort of just a big atmosphere, right? Something very ambient. But the truth is I've actually done that like five or six, seven times before and I didn't want to do it again because I knew I'd probably fall into doing the exact same effects combinations and I'd end up with something sounding similar to those kind of works I've done in the past. So instead, I decided to really challenge myself and to do something I've never done before. And what I decided was to go onto YouTube, go onto my recommended videos, which trust me, it could always be anything. I have no idea what pops up there or why. And um, I would take the very first song and I would use that and I would create something totally new and totally different. So it turned out the first song on there for me was Nicole Scherzinger's Your Love, which I guess that's what happens after you binge watch a bunch of Pussycat Dolls the night before. But, you know, hey, don't judge me. We all need our ear candy from time to time. And that was the song that came up, and so that was what I decided to use. And trust me, at the beginning, I was really stuck. I didn't know what to do. I had never listened to the song before, so I decided to listen to it 20, 30 times to try to really understand it. And one cool thing about this song is if you listen to it, which I encourage you to maybe pause the video and listen to it, even if you hate pop music and even if you hate Nicole, just pause it, take a quick listen. And what you're going to hear is so many of the effects that we had just covered in some previous videos being used in this track. I could really hear different flavors and types of distortion on the various parts. And the one obvious place you're going to hear the effects processing is on her voice, which I'm kind of surprised that they actually went that direction. Uh, the song was produced by the same people who did Rihanna's Umbrella. They've done Mariah Carey. They did Justin Bieber's Baby, so the most well-heard or most heard song of all time those guys were responsible for. And they're not necessarily trendsetters, but they are the best trend adapters in the business today. Uh, they know all the stuff that's going on in the music world, on the indie circuit with, you know, bedroom EDM producers, whatever's going on. And they're able to take some of those ideas and funnel it into the pop music and adapt it for everybody and make it a very sellable sound. Obviously, that pisses a lot of people off. Like, you know, we had sort of a dubstep thing and then Skrillex came along and then suddenly you hear sort of a dubstep and bro step combo on the Britney Spears album. And everybody who done, who had done dubstep before was uh, pretty upset about that. But that's just kind of how things go in music and uh, that's what those guys do but to jump back on topic here they did a lot of processing to Nicole's voice which was kind of strange considering she really is a very good vocalist I don't know her as a person so I can't comment about that but in terms of an actual singer she's quite talented and normally you wouldn't expect to hear that much processing on somebody who has a voice like Nicole and who's so well known for having such a very pure and powerful voice. They do a lot with the um, positioning of the other instruments as well. They keep the voice really firmly centered, so that's still the power, that's still the main focus, but they do a lot of processing to it. You'll hear the delays, you'll hear flanging, you'll hear chorusing, you'll hear a lot of different filter moves, you'll hear different types of reverb in there. Uh, really quite a good example of a track that's using a lot of effects since we've been talking about that. 
But anyway, on this particular track and on what I was going to do, I took that song and I really twisted and mangled and did some very illegal things to it that if for some reason her uh, people ever hear this, I'm sure they will do everything in their power to take it down. It sounds nothing like the original, but the intention was never for it to sound like the original. So I took the concept of your love, the concept of the lyrics themselves, and I kind of turned them into something that's maybe a little bit more realistic, if you will, for actually what she's singing about here. So we'll take a listen to it. And I just want you guys to listen for those effects, listen to the things we've talked about, and you'll get the chance to hear um, just what exactly is possible. Now, I know that there's a ton of phase issues and there's a ton of crazy things that is going to change the playback based on the system you're listening at and also at the volume you're listening to this song. Um, Sorry if that made no sense. I don't know why I'm talking so poorly today, but Go ahead, try to listen to this first on a set of good headphones where you get your full frequency response and you're going to hear um, something very different. Now, if you were then to go and play that on your monitors or play this in your car or play this somewhere else, I guarantee you it's going to sound quite different. But when you're working creatively, that's totally okay. And that was actually one of the intended side effects of doing the whole track on headphones because I pushed my headphones to the extreme. I don't know what it's going to sound like on your playback system. In typical music production, you never want to do that. You want your mix to translate well on every single system, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard that before. But this is not really meant to do that. It's meant to sound different every time you listen to it at different volumes on different playback systems. But I did it in headphones, so I'd encourage you guys to also maybe listen to it in headphones at least first. So let's take a quick listen to this. I'm going to leave my um, page here on my first track, which in and of itself could make a full composition, I just basically threw the reverb at the end and threw the delays and then did some manipulation with other effects. And you can see that there's a lot of uh, things happening here throughout. So I'll try to scroll through so you can watch those automation moves, but you'd have to kind of listen to this track solo to really have an idea of what's going on. Otherwise, just take a listen, try to actively hear and um, see how many effects you can pick out. Let's do it.
So again, all of those samples came from the Nicole uh, Scherzinger track, Your Love. And to be honest, there are a lot of things I'd probably like to go back in and try to keep tweaking, try to keep fixing. But when you have this much automation going on and this many things running in series, it's very difficult to fine tune to get the sound that you exactly want. And sometimes with any kind of art, with any kind of creation, you have to know when to say stop. And so for me, I got to a point where I just had to say stop. I want nothing to do with this project anymore, but I'm still quite proud of it. And I'm happy that I did it because it was something I never would have tried had I not been making this series of videos. So that's going to do it for this video. Like always, I'll post this up to SoundCloud so you can actually listen to it at full resolution. Uh, somewhere along the, the line, I think I accidentally turned off a couple of effects processors, but I've already exported the track, so I have it the way I want it at least. And um, yeah, that's going to do it for me in this lesson. You'll hear from me again in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.